I think it's a it's kind of like a shifting combination of things in my mind. It's not only all of the things that prop up and fuel the prison system, including, you know, all of the industrial interests, all of the business interests, all of the government interests, all of the politicians who are propping up their careers based on this, um, but also all of the structures that both make this possible and gave birth to it in the first place. And so I think one of the things that prison industrial complex as a term does is it challenges that idea that the prison system is broken because it's saying this was actually constructed to do what it's doing right now. It's constructed as a tool of oppression. It's constructed as a form, as a tool of marginalization and a tool in particular to oppress particular groups and particularly black people, poor people, native people, you know, all of disabled people. And also those groups shift, you know, um, depending on the era, depending on the purpose. Obviously, simultaneously, many groups are targeted and prison serves the purpose of oppression depending on the ways in which communities like need those oppressions. You know, and so I think prison industrial complex, the word that's most important to me in there is complex. And it's kind of a double meaning because it's a complex. It's, you know, things constructed on top of each other and things that can be built out. One of the features of the prison industrial complex is the ways in which it expands, you know, and the ways in which it, um, the net widens is the expression that a lot of people have been using lately, I think, because the prison industrial complex doesn't obviously only include prisons and jails. It includes all of the other carceral mechanisms and mechanisms of policing and surveillance in which alternatives are built up 